We start this morning, the Ukraine's president announcing a peace deal to end the violence. But will it be enough for an opposition that wants him gone? As we get new reports this morning of gunfire between police and the protesters, is this truce really a truce at all? An announcement of a possible deal as such as it is a day after the deadliest hours yet in this month's long crisis. It is a struggle that pits East versus West, democracy versus Russian dominance. Hard numbers are very difficult to come by. The Associated Press, though, reporting that opposition claims that 70 protesters have been killed, many of them with bullet holes to the head. A vicious, brutal scene playing out in the streets of Kiev uh, as we watch this continue. I'm Martha McCallum. Morning, everybody. I'm here in America's newsroom with Eric. Martha, hello. And hello, everyone. I'm Eric Sean, sitting in for Bill Hammer. Ukraine's president is promising new elections and a coalition government after a flurry of talks with Russian and European mediators. But so far this morning, there is no official word yet that anything has been signed amid the heartbreaking violence and the shocking scenes we have seen of slaughter. Amy Kellogg joins us now live from Moscow. So, Amy, what are the prospects for this deal? Well, Martha, the words look pretty good indeed, but I think with all of the volatility and the unpredictability of this situation, we certainly can't bank on anything. What we do know at the moment is that a spokesman for Vitaly Klitschko, one of the top opposition leaders, has said that he is about to sign this deal at the presidential headquarters and that this council that represents the protesters, because of course there are some different factions at play here, but they've signed on to this agreement with conditions which would include uh, not having the current interior minister or the prosecutor general as part of an interim government. Now, these good words don't really jive necessarily with what all the protesters on Independence Square, which as you can see is still quite packed. Uh, what they have said, we saw some this morning indicating they were hunkered down for the long term, stockpiling Molotov cocktails, vowing not to go home until Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych does, and a bunch of police officers from the particularly Western-oriented Western Ukraine flocked to the Independence Square today to support the protesters. So, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that this is all going to defuse quickly, Martha, but there are some good signs given that people are lined up at the presidential headquarters apparently signing a document as we speak, Martha. So much still to be answered in all of this. You're in Moscow this morning. The Russians obviously have backed the Ukraine regime. What are they saying about these developments? It's interesting, Martha, because, yes, everyone has basically acknowledged that Russia is the most important player in these negotiations. And while the European diplomats have been tweeting and talking and kind of describing what's gone on, the it's been mum in Moscow. They do have an envoy there. Uh, not clear what role he has played. And certainly the signs, scenes of violence that we've seen in the last few days and the brawls in the parliament are not the picture of the Ukraine that they want to see. Now, I did hear an interview today with the Russian ambassador to the European Union, and he, like other officials who've been quoted over the last few days, are calling this protest movement an attempted coup, even when the question is put directly to the Russians, how can you call it a, a coup when the majority of people being killed are protesters at the hands of police, and they don't seem to see that. So uh, what they have said today is that this deal should provide a way out of the crisis, and what will be interesting to see, Martha, is whether, in fact, if there was collaboration between Russia and the West on this deal, whether it brings Russia and the West closer together or, in fact, drives a further wedge between the two camps. Martha. A lot of questions. Amy, thank you very much.